Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesign and techtips.com. We're working with Divi 5 again today, and I've had quite a few questions about having a vertical nav bar instead of a horizontal one. And the actual menu set up for Divi 5 is exactly the same as it is for Divi 4. I've got the default nav bar up here with a menu and a little logo. And for anybody that doesn't know, I'll show you how to adjust that. We can make it into a vertical menu very easily. And afterwards, I'll show you how to add a vertical menu as well as a horizontal menu for anybody that wants one. But let's do the easy part first. To change your navbar menu styles, and remember I'm using the default header here. I'm not using a custom or global header. This is the default header that comes with Divi. All we need to do is go down to the dashboard here. Once at the dashboard, we can go down to appearance and then customize, or you can go down to Divi and theme customizer. They will take you to the same page. Left click. That's going to take us to this page right here. And as I say, we're using the default header for mine today. So we've got header and navigation up there. If you have created a custom header or a global header of some sort, you may not see the header and navigation up here. As you've created a custom one, you'll need to go into the theme builder. But what we can do for our default header today, though, we're going to click on header and navigation. I'm going to go up to header format. And at the moment, as you can see, I've got the default styles, logo on the left, menu on the right there. We can flip it around. We can have it centered. That way the menu is going to be in the middle. The logo is going to be on the top. We can have an inline logo. As I've got an odd number that may look a bit weird here. It's going to put the logo in between our little menu items there. We can have it slide in. That will give us a, a little drop down like this. And when we click on it, we've got a slide in vertical nav bar on the right side there. Click on it. We'll take it away then. And we can have a full screen menu also, which will look fairly similar to this. What it does is it gives us a hamburger menu on desktop. And when we click on it, it gives us this full screen menu right here. And each of our little mega menu has its own little drop down right here. But for anybody that just wants a simple left hand vertical menu bar, let's put this back to the default. Enable vertical navigation. If I check on that, put a little check mark in there. You can see we've got a vertical nav on the right hand side here. If you want it on the left hand side, you can flip it over just like that. Really easy to do. How easy was that? So that's how to get a very easy vertical nav bar. And of course, you can adjust the size of your logo and the color of your links and everything like that. The normal way back here in primary menu bar. But let's go back to that header format. I'll put it back on the default. I'm going to uncheck the enable vertical nav. One thing I didn't show you about the slide in. If I put this to slide in this time and I say hide navigation until scroll. That's not going to appear until we start scrolling down the page. So that's going to be our fiction ad. That was just a little another option right there. Now, if you wanted to, let's just put this back to the default again. If you wanted to add a little menu on the left hand side, we can do that fairly easily. We've got to actually build it ourselves. Now, if you wanted to have this on every page, you'd want to build it into a little global footer or a global header. That way it'll be on every page. Or you can save it to your library and just add it to the page. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and edit with Divi. I'm going to roll down. I'm going to add a new row. It doesn't really matter where you add it because we're going to be using a bit of fixed positioning for this. I'm going to add a single column to my row. Funny enough, I'm going to use a menu module. We roll down here. There's our menu module. And we're in it. We need to select the menu that we want. And obviously these menus have to be created. If I go back here and we go back to the dashboard. Down to appearance and menus. You have to have created your menus first here. For anybody that doesn't know how to create a menu, have a look at our Divi for beginners. I go over it right there. Once you've created them, 
they'll appear up here and they'll also appear in the drop down and you can choose which menu you want here. Okay, so I've chosen sections there. I don't want to have a logo in this because we've got our logo up there. Elements, well, we've not got Woo installed and I don't want to show the search icon, so that's absolutely fine. Now, one thing you have to remember about this little menu, it's got a white background by default. If you want to have it a different color, you need to take that away and either give your row a color or give this a color. For instance, if I go in here into the row itself and I give it a background color, you're probably not going to see anything. Just for fun, let's just use black. It hasn't changed at all. And if I click back on here, so we're back in the menu, go down to background there. It's got a white background there. Trashing it doesn't seem to do a lot. So if we go in there, just leave it where it is. You can take the opacity down. It'll disappear. We've now got the black background there. Of course, we can't see our text though. It's a little foible they got. You should be able to just trash it like you can with Divi 4, but that works. I'm sure they'll fix that. If we go to our design and menu text right now, let's just make it a color that we can actually see. Again, I'm going to make it white. Fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this row down to about, I don't know, 150 pixels or so, so it makes them stack on top of each other. So again, we can go into the row itself. Design. Sizing. Let's try 150 pixels. 150, I'm putting PX on the end and hitting return. Or you can just select PX over here with a drop down. Okay, that's pretty good. It's stacked, but I want a bit of a gap on the left hand side. If I change this row background color to a red, you'll be able to see it better. We got dark on dark there. I'll just change it back in a moment. We're in the row. Remember, that's where we put the background in. Let's make it a red or something. There, you can see what's going on a little bit better there. I'll probably change that back to black when we put it in place. Okay, if we go back into this row now, we're in, already in it. I'm going to put a bit of padding on the left hand side. So we can do that in design again in spacing. Go down to the left hand side. Let's maybe give it 20 pixels. I think that works. It's stacked it nicely on top of each other there. Perfect. Great. I'm also going to give it a little bit of padding on the top, but not the bottom because we're going to give it a fixed height in a moment. So let's perhaps give it 30 pixels on top. Just to taste, obviously. Now, of course, at the moment, it's going to disappear down there whenever we roll up and down the page. I want it under our menu on this side. So still in the row, I'm going to go over to advanced position. I'm going to change it from relative to fixed. And you'll see it disappear up to the left hand side there. That's OK. It's a little far up. But if we look down here, I'm on the left side. You can put it in the middle. You can put it on the right, bottom left. Well, bottom right, I should say, bottom left. And let's offset it a bit vertically with this. So I know that's 80 pixels. So if we bring it down by about 80 pixels, it should. Well, I think that was 80. It was a while ago I actually built it. That's pretty much there. That was going to work great. Now, what I was saying about the bottom part is I want this to stretch all the way down like a regular vertical nav bar. So it's still in a row. Still in design, and we close down position. Make sure we're back in design there. Going to close down spacing. Going to go to sizing right here. Then we go down to height. I'm going to give it 100 VH, 100 viewable height. That is. Turn. We've now got a nav bar that stretches the whole of the screen. Now we've got a bit of a problem there. When we roll up the page, it's visible. When we roll down the page. See these other sections are rolling on top of it just like that. That's not going to work. And then this one, it's back there at the bottom. What we want to do is change the actual Z index of this until it rolls on top of the sections that are covering it. So again, still in the row, back over in advance and position where we gave it the fixed position just now, we've got Z index. Just start typing a few numbers in there. I'm going to put 99 in and hit return. That's brought it on top. 
what Z index does for anybody that doesn't know, anything with a high Z index number will always appear on something with a lower Z index number. Most of these sections have got numbers less than 20 by default. So if you bring it up, it's going to pop it on top like that. Okay, rolling down the page, that's now on top of everything. Perfect. Great, so on desktop that's okay. Let's change that color back to a black or something like that. We can do that. Content, background's always under content. There we go, that's fine. Now that looks okay on desktop, but if we have a look on tablet, it's gonna shrink up to a little hamburger. That's actually okay. We still got our left nav bar there. And then when we click on that, it's gonna drop down. I kind of like to see that on the left hand side. So if I go into the menu module design, menu text right here, let's just put it on the left hand side. There we go. And I might like to make that white in color or a different color. Still in design, we can do that in icons down below. It's called the hamburger menu for anybody that doesn't know because it kind of looks like a hamburger. There's the default color. Again, let's just make that white. And we'll take a look on mobile. Again, we need to just go back into our text up the top here. Make sure we've got that one on the left on mobile too. That's great. Now, I think on mobile and possibly on tablet, don't need all this black bar over here. It's covering too much real estate. So what we can do here, remember we gave this a fixed height. We need to go back into the row by just left clicking on it. it takes us back to the row design and sizing here's the height we gave it for this i'm going to delete that or just write auto in the a u t o and it'll just take up the amount of real estate state it wants now we can put a bit of padding on the top and bottom just for hamburger to squish it up right there so let's do that spacing wise on tablet remember we're just on tablet here i'm going to take a bit of that padding off the top because we've only got a little bit of padding on the bottom so let's say 10 pixels just 10 in return and we'll put 10 on the bottom also just on this device so it looks fairly linear right there now we've got a bit of space sticking out here and that's okay i'm going to leave that just like that as it's rolling down the page and if you change the size of this, you're going to have trouble when you open your menu. It's going to be all squashed up. Now, we need to go back into this menu because when it drops down, we want to make sure that the drop down has a nice dark background so we can read those. So we're back in the menu. I just left clicked on it. Again, design. Here's the drop down. Drop down menu line color. We'll make that black. Mobile menu background color, or make that black also. Now, if you wanted to on tablet and mobile, you could actually take that background color away or make it opaque with opacity. As we've got a dark site, until we get to there, that's not going to be a problem. What we could actually do, if you wanted to, we'll get out of the menu now. We want to go back into the row. We can select it up here background we gave it was that black color so just on tablet i'm going to click on it if i take that opacity all the way down you now don't see that black bar when we roll down but you want to see something when it gets to the white because it's going to get lost in the white there as you can see or as you can't see you can't see it so what we could actually do I'm going to take the opacity down, not all the way, maybe down to about 25%. That way there's just a hint right there. And when we roll down the page, it's less obtrusive. When we get to the white sections, you can still see it nicely. So make sure that's going to work on mobile too. Another option would be to take that away completely by taking the opacity down can't see it at all there but we need to change this icon color to a color that's going to work over the top of both dark and light sections like this i'm sure you've figured that out if we go back into the module itself design icons here's a hamburger that we made white let's make it the default blue again in fact the lighter blue 
that's going to stick out over the dark, as well as the light there. And let's just check it on mobile now, make sure that it's going to work for mobile. There it is on mobile, we'll roll down the page, it's going to stay there. Long way down to the white section, it's still there, perfect. Well, if we've done everything correctly now, this should work for us. Save the changes. And we'll preview the page. Perfect. And let's take a look on mobile. I'm going to hit my F12 key. I'm using Google Chrome here with the inspector tools. Let's get that inspect out of the way. And again, on mobile, it looks like we need to take it down just a little bit. It is actually working. But it's just up under. We can adjust that fairly easily. Let's look on mobile. And again, it's just under our header there. So we just need to take those down a little bit on tablet and mobile, and we should be good to go. Let's go back to this page. I'm actually going to take that up by another 20 pixels, I think. And let's have a look on mobile. We need to take it down a little bit more. There it is at the top there, still in the row. I'm going to take that down by, let's make it 40, just for argument's sake. And that should do it for mobile also. Now, if we resave, let's check those out. And we'll just refresh this page, but we can just adjust the taste. That's going to work perfectly now. All right, click on that. It's going to drop down. We've got our nice little menu sections there. We can roll down the site. Perfect. So it's working on all devices now. Let's close down my inspector, go back to desktop version. So there you go, guys. There's some menu options with the default Divi header up there. And there's a way of adding a vertical nav bar on the left-hand side if you want to. Of course, you can put it on the right or wherever you want to put yours. But there's a few options. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plenty more videos coming. If you have, don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video just like this one. So once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.